Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to open our alumni, alumni lunchtime webinar presented by Associate Professor Jonathan Binns. Jonathan is currently the Deputy and Associate Dean, College of Science and Engineering and Director, ARC Research Training Centre for Naval Design and Manufacturing. My name is Janine Arnold and I'm the Associate Director, Alumni and Events in the Advancement Office at the University of Tasmania and a proud alumna. In this role, I lead a team of professionals who are actively working to ensure that you as alumni continue to feel connected to and receive value from the University of Tasmania long after you graduate. One of the ways that we do this is through the delivery of a public lectures and forums program and of course webinars such as this one. These webinars are an opportunity to introduce you to the staff and alumni who are playing key roles in that research. People like Jonathan, who are highly valued within our institution. This webinar will form a living record for the university, which you'll be able to access from the university's website. Thank you for taking the time today to hear from Jonathan. Associate Professor Jonathan Binns has a PhD from the University of Tasmania. He's the director of the Australian Research Council Research Training Centre for Naval Design and Manufacturing and the Deputy and Associate Dean of the College of Sciences and Engineering at the University. Creating vessels that are optimised to perform in the water is the focus of Jonathan's research. The application of his skills in applied hydrodynamics is broad. He has designed yachts for the America's Cup, built sailing simulators for rehabilitation centres and custom wave pools that consistently produce the perfect surfing wave. He is now turning his skills to solving problems for the naval defence industry. Associate Professor Binns coordinated at the development of the ARC Research Training Centre for Naval Design and Manufacturing. The centre is training PhD students to address issues specific to naval defence, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. The facilities at the Australian Maritime College, combined with the critical mass of researchers and the incredible links with industry, make the University of Tasmania the ideal place to conduct research in this field. We are one of the most industry-engaged universities in the world. With our collaborators in Australia and around the world, we can solve problems. Following Jonathan's formal presentation, we will allow some time for questions from listeners. You're welcome to post questions via the chat box underneath the presentation on your screen. Please note that you will need to be logged in to live stream to use the chat facility. Any questions will be visible to other listeners. Now, given there's a slight delay in the way that those questions will actually appear, I'd even encourage listeners who would like to ask a question to post those questions as Jonathan's presentation evolves. And again, I'll read them out at the end of the presentation. I will now pass over to Jonathan. Great, thanks, thanks, Janine. Good, good afternoon, everyone. And I'd, I'd just like to start um, with a very small video that we have online on on YouTube as well. Um, it, it shows uh, some of the uh, new educational aspects we're, we're looking at. So, if we could start with that. AMC is offering its courses in Sydney through a Sydney study centre at Darling Harbour. It's an iconic place, well known to people across Australia and also internationally. There's two primary courses right now. There's the Master of Maritime Engineering and the Master of Business Administration and Maritime and Logistics Management. Both of those courses are inextricably linked to industry. In fact, they've been constructed around industry needs. AMC Search is the commercial arm of the Australian Maritime College. So AMC Search will be offering 12 courses in the first six months. Um, it'll be ranging from ship planning courses through to bespoke training around our general purpose hands. And we'll be offering those at various dates. We have the largest range of short course offerings in the country. We deliver from Wollongong to Port Hedland here at the AMC campus, but also soon to be in Darling Harbour at the uh, AMC Sydney Study Centre. AMC is very much a national facility. We need to make sure that it's given to Australia. Sydney is a very important um, milestone for us in terms of our delivering our products to the maritime community. So that's where we are now, but where did we come from? Um, as as Janine has mentioned, my name's Jonathan Binns and I'm an academic, but I have actually trained as a naval architect and I've worked in a design office. I, I used to draw a lot of boats. Um, 
I changed over to being a, an academic some time ago now for two reasons. Firstly, I wanted to learn more, and second, I wanted more security. But as an academic, I, I tend not to take risks. In my role as an academic, though, I'm extremely privileged. I get to be clever. I find new ways of solving old problems. I get to educate the next, educa next generation of industry players. I'm also at the beginning of the technology cycle in research, education, and training. But where does this all lead? Well, I must have industry, government, community as my endpoints. This is where I need everyone to come along with us. We're in the middle of a, a national enterprise for naval shipbuilding. We must turn our nation from a, one of design and manufacturing consumers to one of design and manufacturing exporters in naval manufacturing. It's time for academics like me to start taking some risks, to step out of our comfort zones. And we're certainly seeing that. Groups like DISC in, in Adelaide, uh, DSI in Victoria, DIN in New South Wales, Team University is Western Australia. We're all getting the message. The concepts of fiercely competing for slices of uncapped student placements and high quality student fees are, are certainly melting away. We need to take risks beyond that and have true impact and adjust our education programs to make sure we're fulfilling those needs of industry. We need to collaborate more and concentrate our unique capabilities. And that's something I want to talk a little bit more about today, the unique capabilities that we have at the University of Tasmania. One unique capability that we have is in naval architecture. But what, what is a naval architect? I trained as a naval architect. My graduates have been working as naval architects out in the field. How does one contribute, though, to the global supply chain? I'm sure people who have dialed, in, dialed into this webinar would have a, a view of exactly what a naval architect is and how that feeds into the, the naval shipbuilding enterprise. But um, the most common answers would be along the lines of traditional uh, drawing boats, exactly what I used to do. These are essential elements that make sure that we have the vessel we want uh, designed and built. But to, to start that, we have to start with education, training and research into maritime engineering. For example, even with the, the greatest naval architects in the world, um, such as the designs that uh, we're building in Australia right now, the designs coming from, from Spain, from the UK, possibly from Italy, from, from the US, we all need to make sure that we have our own great naval architects to put a vessel around that technology that we develop. And to find out more, uh, the best way is perhaps talking about a modern-day naval architect. Um, one such modern-day naval architect is one of our graduates, um, a man named Nick Clark. Um, Nick Clark, one such student who, who came with me to the Pacific 2017 conference, and we, we did a very similar presentation to what I'm giving today. But Nick actually managed to speak about his experiences with the AWD Alliance. I, like all researchers at the Pacific 2017, took copious notes. And so what I'm, I'm talking about today is, is definitely my, my representation of, of those copious notes. Uh, Nick graduated from his Bachelor of Engineering in 2010, his Master of Philosophy in 2014, and started working actually before he finished his Master of Philosophy. We transferred him over on a part-time basis, part-time study basis in 2012. Um, he's been working ever since then with the, the amazing team at the AWD Alliance. Now, these, these vessels that they're building, um, we're up to ship number three now. Uh, ship number one is out in service. That's the HMAS Hobart. In fact, she, she came down to Hobart just very close to where we are today, uh, just, just off the pier here. She came down in February on, on one of her maiden voyages. Um, but the other three boats are coming along. Uh, the second boat is now new ship Brisbane, it's most of its way through sea trials. And the, the last boat, boat number three, which I think is going to be called Sydney, um, it should be launched very, very soon. In fact, I looked up just now. It's, it's perhaps in, in May, late May. Or... Um, these boats are quite amazing vessels. They're, they're 7,000 tonnes in weight, 147.2 metres length overall, 18 metres wide, 
and um, amazing five metres deep as well. They're incredible machines. I was on the, the HMAS Hobart when she came here very quickly over on her maiden voyage. Um, they do 28 knots, a range of about 5,000 nautical miles. So that's from a year nearly to, to Los Angeles. But unlike other vessels, of course, this is actually carrying 2,000 tonnes of uh, high technology equipment to make sure that she can perform exactly as she needs to. A crew of 200 on board, making sure that uh, the operational aspects of those boats are, are exactly what we intended them to be. So they're, they're quite amazing boats. And so what does a naval architect do once we've got a, a design such as that in place? There's still a huge amount to do. And I've, I've asked Nick on, on many occasions, um, what have you been doing? What do you think was critical in your education? And, and what's next? So Nick was, was able to present some, some good material up in Pacific 2017 that I've, I've taken some notes. And there's, there's three main elements that a, a naval architect has actually, or a team of naval architects have actually performed tasks in and, and made sure that these boats are, are ready to go and perform those operational requirements. Uh, the first one's uh, development of the requirements, then implementation of those requirements, and one specific task, um, weight estimates as well. So in terms of developing the requirements, uh, the team of naval architects was required as to start with a uh, talking to industry, local support, interstate and overseas for existing regulations and checklists, and then doing quite a number of iterations around those requirements and making sure that that fitted in with the design that, that we we're working with. Implementation of those requirements um, requires naval architects to communicate with various departments within the shipyard, assigning various actions, and to prove complete various, ta various tasks. Um, the, the proof of the completion, of course, is also um, a, a critical component of any naval architect's life in a shipyard. Then finally, the weight estimates. Um, remember, we've got a, a 7,000 tonne vessel. Well, she's, a, she's about 5,000 tonnes to start with. Um, in that parameters, um, the weight estimates certainly have to be calculated to within about 1%. Um, which is quite an amazing feat for a 5,000 tonne vessel. But the location of all that as well is, is extremely important. For example, um, some of the figures that Nick was able to present um, showed us uh, within millimetres, basically, in terms of the, the, the longitudinal centre of gravity. So where all that mass is, is located within the vessel such that heel angles, trim angles are, are, are well under one degree. And on a vessel that's 150 metres long, maintaining that sort of degree of accuracy is, is really quite astounding. Um, requires a whole range of different innovations and construction techniques and, and integrating those construction and manufacturing with the design processes. So coming to that second question that I've asked um, Nick, about what was critical in his education. Well, his undergraduate education that he obviously performed at the University of Tasmania Naval Architecture gave him an excellent head start and gave him the, the underlying skill set to actually perform as a naval architect. The postgraduate education forced Nick to become self-motivated and independent, which has been critical in developing the forefront of the new work that was required to get these vessels constructed. Naval, architect, naval architects in Australia are certainly being a part of the new and evolved design and build process and see it through to delivery to the customer. In Australia, design and manufacturing capability already exists in the country. It does need to assemble and support the engineers of the future. And that's where our education comes in. So, Innovation um, comes in many places, but certainly starts with education. We've got amazing capability in Australia, benchmarked against the best in the world and being found consistently at world-class standard. I've mentioned a, a number of innovative areas in bringing that massive ed, uh, industry together. But of course, there's been many innovations around bringing those, those ships together. The innovation must have research and education behind it. 
Otherwise, you're simply doing the things that we've always done before. This is where education really must come in. The full cycle of education in the unique capabilities that makes design and manufacturing integrated with innovation. Research, education and training in the maritime industry, now more than ever, is all about um, flexibility in delivery, education with pathways to make sure that we come, we, we, we draw on the, the full um, pipeline of, of students to, to fulfill those education needs. Um, integration with industry and government, and then finally, specialisation of disciplines. I'll concentrate on one element and talk a bit about where we're taking those different areas. So, for example, flexibility in delivery. Um, AMC Sydney, you, you saw in that, that um, YouTube video how the AMC has actually expanded out to a Sydney study centre. And in 2019, we'll be delivering a, a range of master's programs out of that. In 2018, we are actually delivering a whole range of short courses as well. That's all about making sure that we can actually deliver our education programs right where they're, they're needed for, for our future workforce. So in Sydney, obviously, we're, we're picking up a whole range of different industry, a whole range of different government enterprises, and providing that, that flexibility in the delivery that our students really need to make sure that they can stay focused on their industry-relevant education. Um, integration with industry. So one project that i am been very involved with, well, started in 2014, was the ARC Research Training Centre for Naval Design and Manufacturing, where we're delivering high-caliber research solutions to the naval design and manufacturing industry. Now, this project started um, from the ARC uh, framework for research training centres, industrial transformation research training centres. In this program, we actually do a postgraduate education in specifically PhDs, but here we're actually taking um, projects that are developed from industry ideas we then make sure that we have industry and government and academia involved in the entire recruitment process of our PhD candidates. We then make sure that the supervision of that entire project is actually both academic, industry, and also from defence, from, for example, DST Group, Defence Science and Technology Group. Um, then every single student that actually participates in this program also has to do a 12-month internship program. Um, internship programs have been quite uh, common in undergraduate, but taking them into the postgraduate sphere has two fantastic elements of um, potential innovation and translation. The translation works in two ways. Firstly, the program is translating research that those research students do into industry, but more importantly, perhaps, is translating industry R&D into the students in terms of how they can perform their R&D projects of the future. So graduates from the Research Training Centre, and we have quite a few research training centres at the University of Tasmania, are eminently ready to conduct research in a, in a commercial industrial environment. And we've, we've seen that already with um, the first graduates just coming out now. So in terms of integration with industry, we can carry that right through from the short course, even certificate three, four levels, right through to PhD levels of education. And that's where we can get some, some real benefits for, for students and for our industry collaborators. The next one, um, internships and co-op programs. So that's, again, is about integrating with industry, integration with industry and government. So this is where we've actually taken our Bachelor of Engineering programs and accelerated them through an, a program of internships and co-ops. So we actually stretched the program out from four years to five years, but then insert 
anywhere from six weeks to four to eight months of work internship placements. This is the most cost-effective way to make sure that our education is actually integrated with industry. Our students also get a fantastic um, capability, fantastic opportunity to see how their education relates exactly to industry. We've had cooperative programs, internship programs with a whole range of industries and companies even throughout Australia and even throughout the world. We've had um, a few in the UK, for example, a few placements. And like the PhD program, the, the integration works two ways. It both shows um, how education is applied in industry, but also affects our, our students and, and how they learn. We've found that this program does certainly have a, a fantastic um, ability to create um, employment-ready graduates, and we've, we've seen that immediately. So in terms of applicability to the Naval Shipbuilding College, education pathways. The Naval Shipbuilding Enterprise is, requires multiple professions to interact across large capacity areas, and for that we need to make sure that the pipeline is... Um, has got every possibility to maintain um, students from, from every different area. So, for example, we, we have a, a range of different um, diploma courses leading to associate degree programs that then can also lead to um, bachelor degree programs and on to postgraduate degree programs as well. That pathway aspect is critical to all of our education design. One um, very important aspect of certainly the AMC is AMC Search Short Courses. As, as Janine mentioned, I'm actually a Deputy Associate Dean for Research, but having the ability to have short courses on availability is, is amazingly powerful operation in terms of solving industry problems. The most common... Um, way of interacting with industry is of course to ask for what, what problems there are we need to solve and sometimes the answer to those problems is not a, a PhD or a, a, an extended research program but sometimes it is a, a short course program and we've, we've certainly done that in the past. We've been able to deliver a lot of educational programs out to a lot of different areas through this short course format. So, just to wrap up, this is, this is certainly a, a very exciting time to be a naval architect. Um, there's a, a very large range of projects coming. There's a large range of projects that are going out right now. And regardless of where those designs come from, we will need a, a constant supply of, of naval architects and maritime engineers. So, Janine. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, I would now invite anyone online who has any specific questions they would like to ask Jonathan now to please post them. Um, as I did note earlier, uh, there is a slight delay, so um, would encourage people to, to post those questions now. Alternatively, if you do actually um, watch or review the presentation on the live stream channel after today's session and do have uh, questions for Jonathan, you can email them through to the uh, alumni office email address, which is alumni.office at utas.edu.au, and we will ensure that um, Jonathan receives those and uh, you can receive an answer to your question. Uh, we haven't had any questions for the moment, so with that in mind, I may close today's webinar. Thank you, Jonathan, for your presentation and for your time, and to our audience for being part of the University of Tasmania's uh, alumni webinar series. Um, as noted, the entire we um, webinar has been recorded, and we'll be sending all of those that registered to watch the webinar series today uh, a link of the recording in the coming days. Thank you very much.